myself Dr. Surbhisani. Today I am going to talk about one of the most interesting topic from one of my favorite subject of dentistry that is sequelae of pulpal inflammation. Let's talk about the two terms first. First term is inflammation. Inflammation is very general speaking term we use in our day to day life when some foreign material, foreign body or some kind of an irritant will disturb a normal functioning of a tissue of human body, then we will say that it's the inflammation of that particular part. But when it continues for a longer period of time and become chronic, then we will give it term as disease of that particular part. So begin with the, these two differences between the two terms, let's talk about the important and the most interesting topic that is the sequelae of pulpal inflammation. With the sequelae of pulpal inflammation, we require some kind of a irritant. Irritant could be physical, chemical or even biological. Whenever there is some kind of an irritant, it can lead to the inflammatory changes and inflammatory changes further lead to the release of protective mechanism and therefore the protective mechanism results in two conditions. The first one is that there is a release of protective mechanism which can lead to the normal healing of the tissue and make the pulp normal. The second condition is if it is continue for a longer period of time that means there is a persistence and the presence of inflammation for a longer period of time then it can lead to the vicious cycle of the pulpal inflammation. Begin with the further let's talk about a few points regarding the protective mechanism of the pulp. Each and every part of our body has certain mechanism to fight against the foreign material like whether it's some kind of an infection, some kind of a bacteria or even some kind of a foreign material. So here I come with a few points regarding the protective measures of the pulp. The first one is there is the discontinuity in the epithelium and the fenestration in the capillaries. The second, there is the increased in the local tissue pressure in the inflamed area. The third characteristics of the protective measure is that there is the increased lymphatic drainage. And the fourth characteristic is that there is an increased interstitial tissue fluid. And all these can lead to the decrease in the transcapillary hydrostatic pressure in the pulp. Now begin with that vicious cycle, the second condition in the sequelae of pulpal inflammation. Of the vicious cycle of the pulpal inflammation, there is an irritant, it could be dental caries, or even the trauma or even the operative procedure which is carried out on your tooth. That can lead to the localized inflammation and that is characterized by two categories. The first one is the vasodilatation, and second is the increase in the local tissue pressure. This can lead to the third condition that is the localized necrosis. And which is characterized further by three characteristic features. First is the accumulation of the waste product, reduced blood flow. Third one is the venous collapse. This can lead to the further progression of the inflammation which is characterized by again two features. The first one is the wider zone of inflammation and the second one is the spread of vascular disturbances. This can lead to the journalized necrosis, the last condition which is characterized by three main features. The first one is the release of lysosomal enzymes and the collapse of additional tissue. The last one is 
extensive collagen destruction and all these can lead to the one chronic condition which is known as irreversible pulpitis. It's all about the pulpal sequelae regarding the inflammation, how a simple inflammation become chronic and give rise to a irreversible pulpitis. If you like this video, press the like button and comment down. Do share more and more my videos and if you are new on my channel, do subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Thank you for watching.